Hi everyone, welcome to my channel of Lively Life Snippets. It feels good to recall and cherish the memories that I had in the past, and a big thank you for being together with me in this process. Today, let's recall my experience last year in April regarding my case presentation on the role of inhaled corticosteroids, ICS, and long-acting beta agonists, LABA, in mild asthma management. This is my third intact presentation. The content was derived from one of the patients I had interviewed with my preceptor during my one-week respiratory intact attachment. This video is a sample of few presentations that I had done during my provisionally registered pharmacist PRP, training in Malaysia. Please note that any content of this video does not substitute professional medical advices. If you have any health issues, please speak to your doctor and healthcare team. Latest GINA 2019 Pocket Guideline recommends that all adults and adolescents with asthma should receive inhaled corticosteroids containing controller treatment instead of MDI salbutamol when required. The two main benefits are to reduce risk of serious exacerbations and to control symptoms. GINA recommends new ICS controller options which will be described in greater detail in the following slide. The focus of our case study today is mild asthma which only involves step 1 and step 2 treatment. There are few mild asthma updates in GINA 2019 guidelines. For mild asthma, like step 1 shown here, as needed low-dose ICS for motorol such as Symbicort is the preferred controller. However, Symbicort PRN use is not licensed in Blue Book yet. It is an A-KK item. If the former option is not available, low-dose ICS taken whenever Sava is taken. This means two separate inhalers used at the same time. Second option is regular ICS or ICS lava every day, plus as needed Sava. This approach is our current practice and I believe most are familiar with this. Third option is maintenance and reliever treatment with ICS for Motorol, with the reliever being low-dose budesonide for Motorol or BDP for Motorol. This resembles the Symbicort Smart Therapy. What is the rationale of the new recommendation? Airway inflammation is found in most patients with asthma, even in those with intermittent or infrequent symptoms. Although Saba provides quick relief of symptoms, Saba only treatment is associated with increased risk of exacerbations and lower lung function. Regular use of Saba increases allergic responses and airway inflammation. Overuse of Saba, for example, more than or equal to three canisters dispensed in a year is associated with an increased risk of severe exacerbations, and dispensing of more than or equal to 12 canisters in a year is associated with increased risk of asthma-related death. Beside that, tolerance develops rapidly with regular use of Saba. In other words, if patient felt relief after using two puffs of MDI Ventolin in the past may require use more than two puff, perhaps, four or six puffs to achieve the same level of relief. After a brief introduction on latest GINA 2019 updates, let us proceed to our case MDMRCH. This form can be obtained from the Respiratory Intact Protocol 2015 edition. I had attached a link in my video description and feel free to check it out. MDMRCH is a 38 years old female who had been diagnosed asthma since 2011. She denied any known food or drug allergies. She is a teacher. She complained of worsening asthma during her day of visit at the pharmacy. Prior to this, she had productive cough for about two weeks and had been self-medicating with cough syrup bought from retail pharmacy almost daily. She had childhood bronchial asthma history which was then followed up in private GP. She had been using MDI salbutamol when requied since 30 years old. She had been nebulized five times since January 2019 in private clinic till April 2019. She visited government clinic and she was referred to cough clinic on the 23rd of January 2019. Upon examined by doctors in cough clinic on two occasions in January and February, together with laboratory sputum test and chest x-rays results, MDMRCH was unlikely to have tuberculosis. In addition, her mother had asthma too and she shortness of breath was claimed to be triggered by dust such as chalk when she wrote on blackboard during teacher. Moreover, she claimed changing weather and temperature triggered her asthma too, especially when she was moving in and out of warm classrooms and cool air-conditioned office as well as climbing up the stairs to reach classrooms. In terms of social history, MDMRCH denied smoking, drinking alcoholic beverages, drug abuse or recreational drug use. She stayed with her family members and was married with children. Other medical conditions she had was hyperlipidemia and diabetes mellitus. 
She was prescribed dual oral hypoglycemic agents, which are metformin and glitrazide for her diabetes and simvastatin for dyslipidemia. The dose of metformin and glitrazide were increased due to suboptimal sugar control as shown in next slide. She claimed to be compliant on her current medications. To evaluate her asthma control in her first MTAC visit on 17 April 2019, Asthma Control Test ACT, is used. She scored two marks for the first questions because most of the time in the past four weeks, her asthma keep her from getting as much done at work, school or at home as she needed to stop a while to breathe. She experienced shortness of breath of breath about once a day in the past month and got two marks in the second question. She often woke up at night due to coughing and wheezing and sometimes early in the morning. She claimed she used NDI salbutamol about three to four times per day, but only one puff each time. She would use it sometimes before she actually short of breath to prevent asthmatic attacks. Patient felt her asthma was poorly controlled. After adding up all the scores, out of a total score of 25 marks, this patient scored only 8. Any values below 19 is considered off-target and medical attention is needed. Six aspects of metered dose inhaler techniques assessment were being tested. If the critical steps, that are those marked with two asterisks are not performed, overall technique is described as poor, even if the patient able to perform all the other steps accurately. For MDI, there is only one critical step, which is step 4 and are MDM RCH able to do it correctly. She missed up two steps which were exhaled before dose actuation and she did not use the second puff at all. Consequently, she scored 4 out of 6 marks and hence, showed satisfactory inhaler techniques. Next, we are going to focus on the pharmaceutical care issues. There are 6 in total firstly, patient did not exhale fully before dose actuation. I advise MDM RCH to exhale fully before dose actuation. Patient showed understanding and good techniques on second attempt and I planned to reassess techniques on next visit the 15th of May 2019 in a month time. The second pharmaceutical care issue is insufficient dose of as needed reliever. Patient used MDI salbutamol 1 puff 100 micrograms when having asthma attacks instead of 200 micrograms. This is insufficient dose to relieve symptoms. Consequently, patient went to private clinic for nebulization. As a result, I advise patient to use two puffs when needed. Patient showed understanding and willing to comply. I plan to her on next visit the 15th of May 2019. The third issue is patient not aware of emergency asthma management. She was unsure of appropriate steps to take during severe asthma attacks. Therefore, I advise patient on life-threatening symptoms like severe sob and cannot speak. The use MDI salbutamol 2 to 4 puffs every 5 minutes before reaching hospital and take 6 tablets of prednisolone 30 mg immediately if patient has been prescribed. Patient showed understanding and willing to comply. I plan to reassess emergency asthma management and give her a written action asthma action plan WAAP, on next visit the 15th of May 2019. The fourth issue is off-target asthma control ACT score today is 8 out of 25. This is off-target. Patient claimed using MDI salbutamol 100 mcg 3 times or more almost every day for the past month. She had nebulized 5 times in the past 4.5 months. In this situation, my plans are to continue doctor plan on asthma diary. To continue doctor plan on newly started MDI beclomethasone 200 mcg BD. I counsel patient about pathophysiology of asthma, indication of both preventer and reliever inhalers, I also emphasize on the importance of compliance to MDI beclomethasone as it take 2 to 3 weeks before maximum benefit is observed. Furthermore, I advise patient to rinse mouth after using MDI beclomethasone patient showed understanding and willing to comply. After the counseling, hopefully, patient will has lower risk of local side effects of ICS therapy which may affect adherence. I plan to review asthma diary, medication understanding, adherence, inhaler techniques and asthma control in second MTAC visit on 15 May 2019. The fifth issue is managing comorbidities. Patient BMI was 33.87 kg per meter squared. Obesity is one of the modifiable risk factors of exacerbation. 
Lack of fitness and reduction in lung volume due to abdominal fat may contribute to dyspnea. Fasting and two-hour blood glucose values were significantly higher in patients with asthma. Random blood sugar level, 13.8 mmol per liter. HbA1c had increased drastically from 6.5% in October 18th to 9.9% in April 19th over six months. I will suggest the patient to lose some weight on next visit the 15th of May 2019. A weight loss program plus twice weekly aerobic and strength exercises improved symptom control, lung function and inflammatory markers compared with weight loss alone. 5 to 10% weight loss can improve asthma control. In terms of diet, less sugar, carbohydrate and fat intake and more fruits and vegetables intake. The last issue is trigger factors avoidance. The trigger factors identified are chalk, stairs, sudden temperature change when moving from sunny outdoor to air-conditioned indoor and vice versa. I suggest patient to reduce exposure to chalk, use whiteboard and markers whenever possible. I also advise patient use MDI salbutamol 200 micrograms 15 minutes before exertion as well as stay either indoor or outdoor whenever possible. Patient showed understanding. I plan to review asthma control and effects of trigger factors avoidance on next visit on the 15th of May 2019. In the following slides, I would like to talk about the four challenges in implementing the new guideline. The first one will be poor ICS adherence, particularly in patients with low symptom burden this refers specifically to the group of patients who use inhaled SAVA three times a week or more, who are experiencing symptoms three times a week or more, or waking one night a week or more. The second challenge will be the cost of implementation, because combination inhalers are more expensive. For example, Symbicort is about four times more expensive than the combination of MDI budesonide and MDI salbutamol. Serotide higher strength the Kahala 55 hundredths of a microgram per dose is about twice the price of the sum of MDI fluctocason and MDI salbutamol. Serotide lower strength the Kahala 5250ths of a microgram per dose is roughly the same price of the sum of MDI fluctocason and MDI salbutamol. Serotide of Ohala 5125ths of a microgram per dose is approximately the same price as MDI fluctocason. However, this is just simplistic comparison by unit price without taking into account the amount of drug per dose and the quantity of doses per canisters which further complicates the cost estimation. Despite the flaws, it shows a general trend of combination inhalers are more costly. The third challenge is currently there are no data demonstrating the efficacy and safety of combining formoterol ICS with maintenance treatment that does not contain formoterol. Therefore, at present all patients requiring combination therapy would have to be treated with a formoterol containing combination license for both maintenance and relief. The two available options listed in Blue Book are Symbicort Turbuhaler and Fostermetered Dose Inhaler. Both are A-KK items. Both inhalers have similar dose and frequency for maintenance therapy, that is 1 to 2 puffs twice daily, up to a maximum of 4 puffs twice daily. If Symbicort Turbuhaler is used as both maintenance and reliever therapy, daily dose should be 1 puff twice daily or 2 puff in the morning or evening. On top of that, when patients have asthmatic attacks, one puff can be used and repeated if symptoms persist after a few minutes up to a maximum of 6 puffs per occasion. Total daily dose up to 12 puffs could be used for limited period of time. If Foster MDI is used as both maintenance and reliever therapy, daily dose should be one puff twice daily. On top of that, when patients have asthmatic attacks, one puff can be used and repeated if symptoms persist after a few minutes. Maximum daily dose is 8 puffs per day. Other formoterol containing combination is Flutiform available in 2 strength 125 fifths and 250 tenths. This type of inhaler is not available in our health clinic but listed in the blue book. It is licensed as maintenance therapy with a dose of 2 puffs twice daily but not indicated as reliever therapy. The last challenge is the role of ICS slash beta agonist therapy in situations for which sarbamoma therapy is currently used, such as acute severe asthma needs to be evaluated as insufficient evidence supports its use yet. In a nutshell, replacing SABA with fast-acting LABA ICS as reliever therapy reduces asthma exacerbation risk. However, the recommendations need to be adapted according to financial resources available, local practices as well as patients' preferences and clinical responses. The end of case presentation. Hooray! 
another one more to go to complete my form tech case presentations. Thank you for watching Lively Life Snippets and if you like my videos, hit the like and share button. Don't forget to subscribe and see you all in the next episode.